Ah, sorry. Uh, didn't realize I had. Didn't realize I was on. Didn't realize I was on the air. Welcome to live television, folks, or live radio. Kidding. Okay. I don't even know what I was doing. I clicked it, and then I was I was daydreaming. I was thinking about my friend Joey. Is what I was thinking about. That Joey had. If Joey's not acting today like a sheep, sheep, found sheep. I was thinking Joey is the one that turned me on to the Know Your Enemy series that the Lord used. So the Lord used Joey to turn me on to the Know Your Enemy series, which showed me that astrology came from Catholicism, which had me quit Catholicism and astrology and turn me into a uh, read your Bible. I was already reading the Bible. Like I told you, this is 2012. I was reading the Bible in, in uh, around 2001, 2002 on a daily basis. But I was reading, you know, a New Living Translation, and but you know, read it enough, and the, the the calling or being called is throughout, which is what my eleven part election predestination word document um, Bible study is all about on my other channel. But I was, but Joey also is the one that while we were chatting during you know the lockdown of last year. He, he listened to my John 3, 16, uh, you know, his, his, his grandfather was a preacher and also a member of an oath-taking organization. And, um, but Joey listened to my John 3, 16 uh, Bible study that was done with the camera. I can't think of which one he was, and I might have even have gotten rid of it. Or maybe that one is without Zoom, but he goes, why don't you start doing your videos, your Bible studies, or your videos? Because I was making a lot of, you know, YouTube videos about, you know, the lockdown and how it was a ritual. I mean, today's 311. Today's the day. Today's the day that the... CDC or somebody, the uh, who, maybe it was World Health, World Health Organization, declared it a global illness. So, you know, and Joey and I probably talked around May or June, and he said, and maybe July, I don't know, why don't you start doing your videos on Zoom? And I was like, I can do that? Yeah, I would do it with a camera. It would be on my computer and it took like two and a half hours to upload to YouTube. Now it takes anywhere from five to 15 minutes, depending on how long it is. Zoom takes a while to load now, but Zoom does it for you. You know, I was looking into buying all this software and stuff and, you know, but I'm not a technical person because I'm, now it'll be 60 in July, and most people my age were just not tech savvy people. The kid the kids are. Kids are, teenagers are, people in their 20s are, even people in their 30s are. Especially 20s, though. But not me. And I was just thinking, like, Joey's gotta be a he's just got he's he's gotta be a sheep. I think he's living with a girl and he's got a baby. But, but I'm, I'm telling you, I've, I've been telling y'all, the Lord's going to wake up. Hindus, Buddhists, it's going to be, and it's not just going to be every so-called Christian, or else where do you get the not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord? Haven't we prophesied in your name to many? No, I think, I think those will be some of the fewest called. Well, then when I'm, when I say that, I mean, church goers like joey's not what you'd call a church goer he's just a, a believer from the old school days you know from his grandfather being a preacher and all that kind of stuff and um i remember joey and i fussing and fighting about me telling him the the need to repent he goes that's ridiculous you're not saved by your works my grandfather was a preacher he told me 
See, because after he turned me onto the Know Your Enemy series, I became this hit you upside the head with a Bible, you need to repent type person, which those are about as bad as you can get. Don't get me wrong. Understanding the need to repent is key. <laughs> But understanding that you're not, do, you don't have the capacity to repent on your own. That is the bigger key. So if Joey was the one that turned me on, that the Lord used to turn me on to know your enemy, which got me out of the world and into basic Bible studies from 2012 through uh, 2016, 13, 14, 15, 16, basically four and a half years, four and a half years of Bible study over at this guy's house. And I've told you all that story many times. And so if Joey's the one that the Lord used to have me watch the Know Your Enemy series and the Lord had Joey have me do my videos on Zoom, which has been so much more productive than helpful toward YouTube, which is the, you know, the ministry, basically. I was sitting there daydreaming. I'm like, it's got to be a lost sheep. But he's a sheep. He just doesn't know it yet. And he might already think, you know, you know, I, I don't know what he thinks. It's been a while since we talked and I don't think he listens to my Bible studies. But, um, yeah, and if, you, if you're wondering what I'm talking about when I say know your enemy. Um, by the way, there's some comments we got to go, go over tonight. Well, maybe we don't. I thought I had a, uh, a notification. Justin said, oh, it was, it was because it was from a previous... Well, that's for sure sad. He was so arrogant about something as bad as that. My dad tried to say, if God allows all of this to happen. By the way, this is in the comments of Tuesday's Bible study where Justin started telling me about his family or telling us. If it was private, he'd have told me on email. But he's, if it's in the comments, it's for us to us to read. Well, what happened? There it is. If God allows this to happen, he isn't even worth worshiping. Well, there you go. Says, what about all the prayers to expose the evil, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, haven't you read the Bible? It's sad. No, you know, and that was the study, I think, where it talked about you must hate your mother, your father, and even your own life be his disciple and we would talk about how it wasn't an emotional hatred i don't think you can emotionally hate uh your friends your family your loved ones you just can't that's not what it meant you got to hate on them is about the best way i can explain it in the way we speak today you can't accept anything that goes against the word and I used Christmas as an example. Hey, come on over for, you know, we're going to hunt eggs and or we're going to, you know, we're going to do Christmas at, you know, an aunt so-and-so's house. We want you there. You got to say, no, I don't, I don't celebrate that. You just, you just have to. That's hating them. It's hating on them. It's hating on what they are partaking in. They'll take it as hatred. They'll be like, you don't even love me. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying they will take it very personal because it's the spirit that's in them that is in war with Christ in you. Your enemies are not flesh and blood. All sheep, I can say, especially once they get the call, their body is an avatar for the Holy Spirit or for Jesus, but it's still wrestling in the flesh because you are not Jesus on earth. Jesus didn't wrestle with his flesh. 
at all. He was God in the flesh. But goats are of their father, the devil. And they're just fine with you when you're just fine with how they're living. And you're communing with them and you're mixing with them and all their paganness. Dirty jokes, cussing, getting drunk, Christmas, Easter, birthdays, whatever. Of their father, the devil will turn on you when you have nothing to do with their pagan ways. That's it. And that's how the Lord calls you out of the world. He actually just calls you to the truth. He has you start walking a straighter and straighter line and people start to throw rocks and stones at you, figuratively speaking. And they won't have anything to do with you. They'll have less and less and less to do with you. By proxy, you're coming out of the world because the world did what? The world kicking you out. You're getting kicked out of the world. It's not like you just did an about face. And so oh, I'm going to quit doing this. I'm going to quit doing that. I'm not going here all at once. No, you'll slowly quit doing a little bit of everything because a little bit of everything ain't as fun as it used to be. Nah, people don't really talk to you like they used to. They treat you kind of different because you are kind of different because a peculiar people, a chosen generation. Remember that one? Unless you're new. A peculiar people, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And I never do remember that one, do I? Mm, I said I was about a month ago. Well, about two, three weeks ago. There was another one I said I was going to remember. And that's Zechariah 13, 9. Woohoo! But you are a chosen generation. When? From the foundation of the world. A royal priesthood and holy nation. A peculiar people. What? I'm peculiar? Uh, if you're doing, if the Lord's calling you out of the world, the world will see you as peculiar at best, if not weird, or just somebody they don't want to be around no more. How did I get off on this? I have no idea. I'm supposed to be doing a Bible study. Start off talking about Joey. And then, oh, we started, that's right, we were talking about Justin's uh, comment. I'm like, dude, how many read the Bible? It's going to get much worse than it has ever been in the end. I tell him about the falling away and how his words make me think that that's the group he's in. Well, good point. And uh, I will say this, Justin, the, the falling away comes right before that man of sin is revealed or you know it's it's within that same verse or the verse before it and so the falling away is is at the abomination that causes desolation the whole world is handed over to it so any churchgoer any relative or any fr all goats are going to fall to that side that is a great falling away they are as far away from you from that moment forward. The whole world will be. And um, and we did we did cover that just the other day. Um, Falling away Bible verse. Okay, I was there. Just went, I don't know where I was. There's falling away. So the removal of the church does not come, except first comes the falling away. What is the falling away? It's the man of sin be revealed. 
So it's the same verse. That's the abomination that causes desolation. What you're seeing is not a falling away. What you're seeing, Justin, is you coming out of the world because the world is not digging you. So we know we all must through much tribulation, Acts 14, 22, enter the kingdom. And so if you're receiving tribulation from your father, be of good cheer from a spiritual standpoint. It's kind of like a thumbs up, like you're a sheep. We never know for sure, but boy, the more and more conflict you receive because of the truth, because of the biblical Christian walk, not because of a political stance or something happened on the job. Now, if your job doesn't like you because of what you teach or stand for, but you don't need to be telling it at the job. You know, Daniel, Daniel thrived in Babylon. Daniel wasn't running around on the job all day and he thrived by doing a great job. He didn't run around all day going, you guys are all pagans. <laughs> he went to work and did his job. And he prayed to his Lord. Prayer changes nothing. Remember, everything's already been ordained. Not my will, Father, but your will be done. You're really praying for the strength to handle his will. But if it be your will, Lord, can you do this for me? If it's something that ends up coming to fruition, which happens uh, with me plenty. It's something pretty basic, something pretty simple, something I was worried about or sweating over. And all of a sudden I pray on it and it just ends up being okay, just like I was hoping for or praying for, you know, hopeful for. And, but that was because the Lord called me to do that. But please never think that something was going in direction A, but because you prayed, God, change the direct now everything has been declared the end from the beginning everything is set all right so i'm smelling the salmon that's just sitting there probably overcooking hang on just a second all right folks i do got to get moving uh in the city layeth four square and the length is as large as a breedeth and he measured the city with a reed 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breedeth and the height of it are equal, so as to be a cube, correct? And he measured the wall thereof and 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel. And the building of the wall of it was jasper, and this city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Folks can't even imagine it. You're going to be sitting there going, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not married anymore where's my wife yeah, trust me that's easy for me to say right because i'm single trust me and the foundation you, when you think of things in earthly ways you cannot even imagine things in heavenly ways you just cannot it we don't have that in us but if you are in the spirit deep enough you can sure get two or three percent in your mind of what it could even be like feel like look like the city was pure gold like unto clear glass i mean i think when we look at a sunset sometimes and it looks like gold in the sky and it's just there's something that just looks pretty amazing about a sunset. You kind of can get a glimmer glimpse. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third, I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher a lot of these. Um, that word right there. <laughs> the fourth was an emerald. The fifth, uh, sardonyx. The sixth, Sar sardius. The seventh, crystallite the eighth barrel, the ninth topaz, the 10th 
Chrysophrus. Chrysophrusus. I don't know. That word right there. The 11th, Jacinta, and the 12th, Amy Theist. And I've got a friend named Amy Theist on Facebook that came to me from YouTube. I hope she's still there with me. She doesn't comment much like she used to. I don't know if she watches the Bible studies. She might. There she is. Is that the same spelling? Closer you are to God, the more enemies you have. Consider it a blessing. You are living according to Christ, not of this world. Unbelievable. How perfect was that? And look at her. And we're talking about the gold. Look at that. And she's now friends with my friend Lori, who's an old friend, because a lot of us, we all kind of commune together. Uh, still doing a birthday thing, but hey, I'm going to tell you something. That was the last thing I came out of was birthday. I removed my birthday from my Facebook. Um, becoming the woman of God designed you to be will cost you friends, relationships, plans, material things. Become her anyway, so... Be with someone who understands how rare your love is. Did you get the idea, man? That's Amy Theist. I think that's the exact A M E T H Y S T. Same spelling. Wow. Love it. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every, every several gate, I thought maybe I just was misreading. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. That's my favorite part right there. Pure gold. And now, look, y'all, the Lord's already ordained this. That's exactly what you're going to see. I was listening to Jim Brown tonight and really taken aback at some of the things he starts to get into, how wrong he is about Revelation. I might just do a study on it. Because some of the things he says are amazing. Uh, boy, like, where is he right? Where is he wrong? Improve it. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So the temple is God. But I think we are the ark. Isn't that what Jim said and... We kind of read something that said that. And this city had no need of the sun, neither the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. By the way, uh, Amy Theist, um, if you do um, watch my Bible studies, then you're one of eight to 12 or eight to 16. Um, comment and just say, I'm watching. Because it would just be great to hear from you. Or message me. And I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty. And the, okay. Let me see. So God did light it and the lamb is the light thereof. Moving over to John. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. Do we even need to do this? World is cosmos, which means uh, the first definition is appropriate harmonious arrangement. The fifth definition, down, is what they plugged in, meaning world, the whole world. This verse should be, for God so loved his harmonious arrangement. For God so loved his sheep that he ordained at the foundation of the world that he gave his only begotten son. But the first definition, I have done this so many times, haven't I? So when you key in John, it'll, John 3, 16, will pop right up. And you go down. John 3, 16 is actually an election predestination Bible verse. For God so loved the... Well, what did he love? He loved the uh, Greek word 2889 is what he loved. 
cosmos with a K. An appropriate and harmonious arrangement, really, of what? Choosing his family at the foundation of the world or constitution, order, declaring the end from the beginning. Constitution pretty much would be as law, I would think, as government would be as kingdom or government would be kingdom. That's the first definition. But Erasmus chose the fifth, the inhabitants of the earth, men and the human family. So for God so loved what we call the world. And that's why that one Bible verse is slammed up your nose, in your ears, down your throat, in your eyeballs. But there's no truth in it the way it's taught. For God so loved the appropriate harmonious arrangement that he gave his only begotten son. For God sent not his son into the harmonious arrangement to condemn the harmonious arrangement. Yeah, that's what that is. For God sent not his son into the harmonious arrangement to condemn the harmonious arrangement, but that the harmonious arrangement through him might be saved. You can almost put the church, just the word church in there, because that is his harmonious arrangement. So I would probably, if I was write, rewriting the Bible, I would say, for God sent not his son onto the earth to condemn his church, but that the church through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Well, who, who, who is that? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And don't forget. And I think it's worth noting Matthew 15, 24, Jesus said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, how is he only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is the church, the harmonious arrangement, and sent for the whole world? But he that believeth is not condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. And the men loved darkness. Now, that's, that's the proper word, world. And the men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So if Jesus came in um, not to condemn the world, the whole world as we think of it, but that the whole world through him might be saved. And Jesus says, I lose not one of my sheep that my father gave to me. And that no man can come unto me except the father which have sent me draw him and I will raise him on the last. So we're going to be getting to that in John 6. All three of those Bible verses, actually. John 639, you can jump ahead. John 644 and John 665. Men love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. That's the goat world. For everyone that doeth evil hates the light. So the goats will hate the sheep. That's how you come out of the world. Neither, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. After these things, Jesus came and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. What type of baptism? Water. And John also was baptizing water. 
because Jesus had not yet ascended, so he is not yet baptizing with the Holy Spirit and fire. Because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John, well, there's the word water right there. For John was not yet cast into prison. All right, I hope, I hope yeah, if y'all are new to my channel, you're really going to get tripped up by this. So just ask questions. That's all I can ask because I really, 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 really got to get going. It's 10 o'clock at night. I got to work tomorrow. All right, love y'all.